Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will explain inter-symbol interference with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, first of all, I will discuss about basics of inter-symbol interference. After that, I will explain bandwidth of the digital signal. After that, I will compare ideal digital signal with band limited signal. Due to band limitations, there can be inter-symbol interference. At last, I will explain mitigation techniques of ISI. So let us start this video with first agenda, that is basics of inter-symbol interference. ISI happens when part of one symbol mix into the next symbol. So inter-symbol interference happens when part of one symbol mix to the next symbol, right? That is inter symbol interference. And due to ISI, there can be many issues at receiver side due to inter symbol interference. Digital receiver may not be able to receive data properly. So, first of all, let me explain why there can be inter symbol interference. See, the first reason is band limited channel. Due to limitations of bandwidth with channel, there can be inter-symbol interference. Second is multi-path signal. See, as and when the receiver receives signal from the multiple path, then there can be path delay in between signals. And due to delay in between multiple signals, there will be pulse broadening. And that pulse broadening leads to ISI, right? See, ISI may happen due to non-ideal filtering. See in digital system, at transmitter and at receiver, we will be using filters and we don't have ideal filters, due to which there can be inter-symbol interference. And one more reason that is based on noise in channel and system. So, but obviously due to noise, there can be inter-symbol interference. Now, let me discuss about what are the issues that is there due to ISI. See, first issue is increased bit error rate. If we have higher inter-symbol interference, then there will be more errors in received signal, right? See, there will be reduced SNR. SNR is signal to noise ratio. If you have higher inter-symbol interference, then signal to noise ratio that will go down, right? There will be decreased channel capacity due to ISI and there will be distorted eye pattern. In my last video, I have explained eye diagram in which I have told you if you have wider eye opening, then there will be lower inter-symbol interference. And if you have narrow eye opening, then there will be higher inter-symbol interference, right? So if we have higher ISI, in this case, there will be distorted eye pattern. Distorted eye pattern means that will be having lower eye opening, right? Now, let me discuss about bandwidth of the digital signal. So here, I'll be considering digital data that is 101010 like this and that I'll be coding using NRZ Polar. See, in NRZ Polar, for logic 1, there will be positive voltage and for logic 0, there will be negative voltage. Here, with each digital data, bit duration is TB, right? So this digital data stream, that is square wave, right? And this is there in time domain. So with each digital symbol, bit duration is TB. And if you observe frequency response, then that is sync function, you can observe. Frequency response of square wave, that is sync function. Here, sync function is Tb that is bit duration into sine of pi f Tb divided by pi f Tb whole square. So with this frequency response, if you observe this is major low, right? And this major low that is having width up to frequency 1 by Tb. Then we have second low that is having width from 1 by Tb to 2 by Tb. And see, there are so many lobes. 
So ideally you can say with this square wave bandwidth is infinite, right? So if you have infinite bandwidth signal, then only one can have ideal square wave. But do you think you can transmit infinite bandwidth? No. So what we do? We used to limit bandwidth. So here, see with this same sync function, we don't transmit infinite bandwidth. So here, what I'll be doing is I'll be transmitting only major low bandwidth. So major low that is having bandwidth up to 1 by TB, you can observe. So if I transmit this much bandwidth, then what will happen? Then here you can observe, we have digital data, where here we have logic 1 that is having higher voltage and logic 0 that is having zero voltage. That is how I have considered digital data. And see, ideally, if you have infinite bandwidth, then there can be square wave that I have told you, right? But if you transmit limited bandwidth, then you can observe this logic one that is getting spread out. So that is pulse spreading, right? And due to that, you can observe this first symbol that is having interference with second symbol. So this is inter symbol interference. You can observe here, we have interference. Here also we have interference, right? So inter symbol interference is what? It is interference of one symbol to the next symbol, right? And that is happening due to limitations of bandwidth. If you have infinite bandwidth, then only there is a possibility that one can have ideal square view. But we cannot have transmission of signal with infinite bandwidth. The reason is we are delivered to transmit so many signals. So due to limitations of bandwidth, we transmit finite amount of bandwidth only. But due to that, there will be interference of one symbol with next. That is inter symbol interference, right? Now, let me give you one example of ideal signal with band limited signal. You can observe here, we have ideal square wave with digital signal. One can say here we have logic 0, then logic 1, then logic 0, 1 and 1, right? But if you transmit this same signal with limitations of bandwidth, then that won't be square wave, it will be somewhat like this. And that is happening due to limitations of bandwidth. And with this, there will be inter symbol interference. You can observe this first symbol that is getting mixed over here with second one. And then you can observe this symbol that is getting mixed over here. So it is not ideally square wave. It is happening like this due to ISI, right? Now, let me discuss about mitigation techniques of inter symbol interference. So, the first technique is equalization. Here, we will be using equalizers. Equalizers are the filter that we implement at receiver side to counteract the distortion introduced by the channel. They attempt to undo the effect of ISI by inverting the channel frequency response. So, in Equalization, we will be using equalizer filters by which we will try to undo the effect of channel, right? See, second technique is pulse shaping technique in which here we will be shaping transmitted pulse to minimize the interference in between symbols. Common example include raised cosine and root raised cosine pulse shaping filters. Next mitigation technique is OFDM that is orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. Here in this modulation technique, we will be dividing high rate data stream into multiple lower rate data stream and each of these multiple lower rate data stream are modulated onto different sub carrier frequencies. Right, and that will be orthogonal to each other. And last technique is coding scheme. In coding scheme, we will be implementing error correction codes such as convolution code, 
टर्बो कोड्स दैन हेल्प टू डिटेक्ट एंड करेक्ट एर आर कॉज बाई आई एस आई एंड इट विल इम्प्रूव सिस्टम रिलायबिलिटी राइट सो ड्यू टू आई एस आई देर कैन बी एरर्स इन रिसीव्ड डिजिटल डेटा सो दैट कैन बी रिजॉल्व बाय इंप्लीमेंटिंग कोर सीवन दैट इवन वी विल बी स्टडिंग इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज इट सेल्फ सो दिस इज हाउ आई एस आई इज इफेक्टिंग ट्रांसमिशन इन डिजिटल सिस्टम आई होप यू हैव एंजॉयड दिस सेशन Still, if you have any confusion, just place that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.